What's the most awkward, negative, or plain crazy response you've gotten after performing a good deed, part two? Please help us grow by subscribing our channel, Thread Tonic. Account one. I used to work for a company that set up tents for weddings. This bridezilla made us move the tent we already had set up. Since the customer always gets their way, we did. She promised she'd buy us pizza and beer for staying longer to make her happy. We all agreed. Almost five hours later, we finished with no pizza or beer. We went up to her to get the contract signed, and she said, I forgot I promised you refreshments. Here you go. She bent down and gave us the garden hose. Account 2. I had just gotten off work and was headed to a local tavern before class. At an intersection, I noticed a 40-ish year-old black woman in a nurse's uniform pushing her car through the intersection in the middle of downtown and start heading up a hill. I thought for a brief moment and did an illegal U-turn in the middle of the road to come back and assist her in pushing it partway up the hill and into a parking lot that was about 75 feet away. I'm an electrical engineer and I was wearing my work clothes which consists of a button-up shirt with geek paraphernalia in the left pocket. Driving my 2011 black Camaro, I'm 65th tall, about 225 velibs, and have a very deep voice. I pulled up behind her and turned on my flashers for safety and got out of my car. The look on her face was of utter fear. I, in the most calm voice I have, mentioned that she was pushing her car up a hill, and I was more than happy to assist her in getting it to the parking lot. She was shaking like a leaf, and through her shaky voice, she mentioned that her husband was on his way several times. I could see that I was terrifying this lady for some unknown reason. So I apologized and wished her a good day, hopped in my car and headed to the tavern. I'm still at a loss to this day as to what the hell had happened. Account three. Was on a railroad platform at Thailand and this kid, around three war old, wandering around all by herself and was getting relatively close to edge of platform while a train was about to enter the platform. As a matter of split-second decision-making, I ran up and grabbed the kid's hand and started dragging her back. And while I was doing this, some lady starts to scream out of nowhere, pointing at me. She was quickly followed by a mob of people point and yelling at me in Thai. Needless to say, I had to run my ass out of there. I was pretty sure I wouldn't be able to explain the situation to those people in English. Account 4. Just a weird situation, really. I was visiting New Orleans and was taking a walk around the French Quarter at around 5 a.m. I hear someone yelling at me. Hey, big man! Big man! Big man! Wait! I turn to see this old homeless guy with a ball cap on wobbling towards we with haste. I'm more curious than nervous as I'm 6'7". And this guy was all of 5'3". He says, mind helping me out with something. He looks kind of desperate, but friendly. I say that I'll help him and ask what he needs. I'm a bit nervous now because I have no clue what he's going to ask my help with. He whips out a bottle of gin and says that he can't get the lid off. I open his gin and he thanks me profusely, saying that his day is now going to be much better. Count five. I bought a house about a year ago. My neighbor is an elderly single woman who seemed nice enough at first. I gave her a Christmas present, would shovel her walk when it snowed, etc. Last spring, I planted some new grass in the front of my home. Because the grass I had was mostly ugly weeds, I even planted some new seed in our tiny shared plot of grass. I live in a town home, since I knew she was old and probably didn't feel much like gardening. One day, when watering the new grass, she started screaming out of the blue. Water is getting on my grass, and that a drop of water may hit my foot, and don't get any drops of water on my concrete. Think of it like we live 500 yards away from each other. Since then, she has been an absolute horror, cutting down my tomatoes that were growing on her side of the fence that I earlier said she could have when they matured. Screaming at my boyfriend when he attempted to mow the entirety of our shared piece of grass, because it looks weird as hell when only half of eight square feet is mowed. She even went so far as to pull weeds from her lawn and place them on top of her half of the grass so we couldn't touch it with the mower. It makes no goddamn sense, evil crone. Account 6. As some of you of the Midwest may know, last winter, Missouri experienced one of the most treacherous winters that we've ever faced in decades. The University of Missouri. 
Columbia had closed school for the first time in about 40 years due to such harsh weather conditions. One day, my friends and I were semi stranded out at his place off campus, which is at the bottom of a slightly slanted cul-de-sac, and we noticed his neighbors having trouble with their car. We decide to be good neighbors and try to help them by pushing their cars up. So as we run out to help them, we shout a little, Seems like you guys could use some help. Flash a smile and proceed to help them without their permission. Because who needs permission when you appear to be in genuine need of help? Yeah. This bitch decides to bark back at us and say, We don't need your help. Go away. We then decided to just stand there and watch these people struggle getting up the road. Account 7. Back when I was 8 or 9, me and my family went to a shopping mall in Saudi Arabia. Since it was shopping season, all the shopping carts were taken. Luckily, or unluckily, we parked close to this elder man struggling to get his groceries in the back of his Jeep. I decided to help him out with the groceries and take the cart from him. Win-win, right, wrong. As I approach him and offer to help him, that cranky old coot freaked out and raised his walking stick at me telling me to go away. I raised my hands up in defense and backed away slowly. Account 8. Heading into work one day, there was dude in front of me on a big new Honda Goldwing. He seemed a little unsteady on it. It just so happened that he was going the direction I was, just he was in front. At one point, he decided the person in front of him was going too slow, so he zooms around them and takes off. I round the next big bend in the road and see busted pieces of plastic all over, and this dude way out in the ditch with his bike on top of him. So traffic is backed up and nobody is helping the dude. I pull over and run up to him and his radio is blasting gospel music. He's an older dude, a little out of shape, nose obviously broken and lips all fucked up, and he just screams at me, Turn off the fucking radio, goddammit! So I try and figure out how the radio works, but it's not turning off, so after five seconds he screams, Just leave it alone, useless funk. At that point, another woman runs up and says she's a nurse, and he says, Bitch! Do I look like I need a nurse? Help me up. And she looks at me, and we both give each other a Fuck this guy, shrug and go back to our cars. Fire and EMT were showing up right as we were leaving. Let the people that get paid for that shit deal with assholes like that. Count nine. My friends and I are actors, and a few months ago we went to an audition conference in North Carolina. We stayed at a friend's house the night before, and at around 7 or 8 a.m. we went to Sheets to get some food before the auditions. A group of people there were very obviously doing the same thing we were. So my friend Alex, who is the most outgoing person I've ever met, goes up to them and tells each of them to break a leg. Most of them respond with a thanks in turn. However, as we leave, a woman, who is also here for the conference, follows us out. Alex holds the door open for her and, true to his fashion, says, Break a leg. Her reaction to this was to look him up and down, turn her nose up at him and smirk. I've never been more stunned at a courtesy, and neither had Alex. He did not take this very well at all. So for the rest of the day, any time he saw her, he made it his mission to destabilize her as best he could. He accomplished this by telling her to break a leg again and again each and every time he saw her. Before her audition, after it, before her callbacks, all day long. I'd never seen a person so jumpy by one phrase, best part. A month or so later, I saw her at a different audition conference. As I walked by her, I said, break a leg. As I walked away, I'm pretty sure I heard, You've got to be fucking joking, TLDR. Politeness prevents people from ruining your day. Count 10. A couple years ago, a friend's sister was just about to fly home out of NYC with a group at the end of a church trip. She's just about the nicest person you could ever meet. One of those people that is so sweet that it makes your teeth hurt. After going through security, she noticed that the man that had been in front of her had left his watch in one of the trays. After she collects her belongings, she grabs the watch and takes off after the man to return the watch, but can't find him. She returns to the checkpoint to hand it over to security and let them know what happened. When she did, though, instead of being thanked or simply told to go on her way, she was asked to follow one of the security personnel and was placed in a holding cell without any explanation. A while later, the police arrived and arrested her for theft, 
It turns out that the guy noticed his watch, a Breitling, missing and immediately told security that it had been stolen. When she returned the watch, the security chief opted to call the cops and just let them sort it out. Who returns a watch unless they stole it, right? Anyway, while the rest of the group flew home, she was arrested, and over the course of two years and multiple costly trips to NYC by her and her family, she finally saw a trial. She was found guilty of a misdemeanor and sentenced to six months probation, all for trying to help a stranger. Oh yeah, after her initial arrest, she was deemed a flight risk and a danger to society and was refused bail until her family flew in and managed to convince a judge otherwise. Account 11. I was 13 at the time and new to the UK. Moved in from the US. A homeless man passed out on one of the buses I was on, and the first thing I did was went to check if he was okay. Nobody was doing anything. Then called the ambulance when I realized he wasn't responding, asked the bus driver to stop, and he refused because he's on a late schedule. People on the bus, including girls from the same school I went to, started taunting at me for wasting their time and bothering the bus driver. My response was that there was an unresponsive homeless man clearly lying on the pathway of the bus. Eventually, I got the driver to stop, then called the ambulance again to notify them of our location. All I kept hearing from those who were forced to get out of the bus and catch another one was how selfish I was and an arrogant teenager. I was already the subject of bully at school, so when news of this incident got out, it only fed fuel to the fire. Edit. Addition. Just thought of another story. Although not as extreme as my first. This isn't exactly a rejected Good Samaritan Act, but similar. Also in the UK, on the overground this time, I was on my way to work when this dude comes on bleeding from his ear and struggling to maintain balance. He fell on my lap. At first, I thought he was harassing me, so pushed him off before discovering the blood from his ear and called the train guard for assistance. As he came over, me and this other girl were trying to pull the man onto a seat as the train guard came to see if he was okay. There was no signal in the area we were passing through, so no one could call for any help. All the guard did was ask the man who couldn't speak English if he was okay. Obviously, he couldn't respond accordingly, only grunted, and the train guard looked at me and the girl and said, He'll be fine. I pointed out that he was bleeding from the ear, so it could be dangerous, and he said he'd look into getting someone to help. I saw the train guard go to the end of the train and stand there and do nothing. The man tried to say thank you to the blonde that helped him, and she clenched her purse, awkwardly ignored him and also went to another side of the train. Everyone else just continued to read their newspapers. I'm not any better than these people, because I didn't call the ambulance when I got off, but it's a lesson to be learned if you've learned that you run the risk of being ostracized just for helping others, or mainly because others won't do it either, you'll struggle to help. Even if someone's life potentially depends on it, conclusion, humans suck. Account 12. I work in a retail pharmacy. A lot of people complain about us for taking so long to fill their prescriptions. We still get bitched at when it takes a long time to call around to various insurance companies to find out who covers them because they don't carry their card with them and they refuse to go home to get it. Pro tip, we cannot magically look up your insurance information unless you are on Medicare, Medicaid. Also, don't tell us that we are incompetent when your insurance company doesn't pay for a drug. We do not determine what your insurance company covers and we do not set your co-pays and deductibles. If you are nice, we will gladly reach out to your prescriber to get the prescription changed to a less expensive medication. However, if you are screaming at us, we will give the prescription back and tell you to call your doctor. Lastly, don't yell at us or get prissy with us when you are out of refills. You opened up your bottle for a month that said, zero refills remaining, and had a large red sticker on the bottle cap saying the same thing. Account 13. I was walking to class when passing through a doorway. I noticed someone behind me and decided to hold the door open wide. Suddenly a girl walked through and started off on a crazy tirade about me assuming she couldn't open the door herself because she was a girl. It was right around when she said, men like you disgust me when the guy in the electric wheelchair that I was actually holding the door for made his way through and said, Hey, thanks, man. 
The look on her face after her sudden realization of the situation sticks with me to this very day. 